You probably already know this, but formatting your data makes it easier for your users to understand it. Power BI allows you to use formatting options in the ribbon settings, but did you know that there are a lot more customization options like applying format strings, changing your format strings dynamically, or even control which format strings are being used based on which level you've put them in. Let's have a look at all of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So let's start at the very beginning. Let's actually have a look at how do you usually format your data in Power BI. So when you bring in your data to visualize it into your Power BI reports for the first time, you might find that this data is not showing in the correct format. Maybe you want to show your dates a little bit shorter, or maybe remove decimals in your number type columns. The most basic way that you can control this is by using the formatting options in the ribbon menu. Let's have a look at this table that I've created in this Power BI report. We have the date column brought in from our calendar table, and we have the sales measure brought in and created as a sales measure. Let's apply some formatting into this data. Let's select the sales measure here from the data pane, and under the format settings here, you can choose from a number of different format options that you can set for this measure. But at the moment, since we are representing sales, which is a monetary value, we'll choose currency for now. What it will do is it will add some relevant formatting to this measure already, including things like the currency symbol, any commas, as well as decimals if they apply. So from here, if we wanted to remove the decimals, we simply go to the auto here and select and change this to zero. That will remove the decimal points from this sales measure. Let's now format the date column, which we wanted to change into a shorter format. So when I select the date column from the data pane here, looking at the formatting ribbon at the top here, you'll have a different set of options that you can choose from in terms of how you want to show that date column. Maybe you want to show it as a short date, which is what we wanted, or maybe you want to show the full name of the months, or maybe show the date and time. So for now, let's select the short date option here, which will change our date to only be showing the date with the format of date, month, year. So if we go back to that format options that we have here, you can see that for the majority of all these different formatting options that you can choose from, inside there is an open and close parenthesis. The strings inside this parenthesis is actually what we call the format strings, which is what controls how your values are being shown in this table. Seeing how each of these options and what their format strings are is useful because it means that you can actually type and create your own format strings if that option that you want is not available in this selection. A common scenario of when you'd want to customize the format strings is if you want to show your dates in a month, day, year format, which is the US format, as opposed to what I have here in my locale, which is day, month, year. So to change this, instead of selecting one of the format options here, we can simply just follow the format strings that we chose for the short date, in which case this is going to be mm slash dd slash four y's. So this will give us a month, day, year format. So that's a pretty good segue to my next topic, which is the actual format strings themselves. So the format strings and their syntax allows us to change how we visualize our data in our Power BI reports. But what are some of the syntaxes that we can use to customize our data? I would say that for dates, it's a lot easier to identify what kind of format strings are available to you because you can simply browse through the drop-down options that Power BI gives you and then just simply copy or modify it to your needs. However, there are a lot more options, especially if you're working with numbers to modify them using format strings. Now, I've already covered format strings and all of its nuances in greater detail in a separate video, but I'm going to cover some of the more common ways that you would format your number type data in this video. So here's a different report that I created. I have two columns in this table. One is the numbers, which will stay as it is and the number formatted, which we will customize using format strings. So we can see the value of what it was before and after we've applied the format strings. So if I first make sure I select the measure number formatted, and let's go to format here. So instead of general, we're gonna type our format strings. So the first thing to know is that you use zeros and hashes to represent your data. From the formatting pane here, if we put 0.0, .0 what it will do is it will force to show your values with one decimal point. 
Now, if we change the zero to a hash, what it will do is it will only show decimal points where there is a value that is not zero in that first decimal point, which is why you can see the decimal point here, but not in this one, for example. However, keeping that to zero forces those numbers or those decimal points to always show that value in that decimal, regardless if it's zero or not. The more digits you add in your decimal points, the more digits you add into your value. So if we add another zero, for example, you will see that it will give us two decimal values. Adding a comma groups your data into thousands. Adding two commas groups them into millions. Adding three commas groups them into billions. You can add a prefix or a suffix to your format strings. If you're grouping them like this, just make sure you add a dot after the commas. So for example, here we added AED, which is typically a suffix that won't be available in the normal kind of formats that you would be able to choose from. You can also add a prefix by just adding it just before your number. So as you can see here, we can add a pound sign there. You can also bundle up three format strings into one line separated by semicolon to customize how you want to show your data. If it's a positive value, a negative value, or if it's empty. So to keep this video short, I'm just going to paste this format string that I've already built. If I hit enter here, what it will do is for the positive numbers, it will show it as it is with one point of decimal, as we've written here before the first semicolon. The second semicolon shows us how the value will show if it's a negative, which is how typically in financial reports, a negative value is shown by wrapping it with a parenthesis. And if the value is zero, we want to show the value none on our table. And as you can see, when the value is zero, it shows as none. So what's good about knowing format strings is that you can use them to customize the formats of different elements in Power BI. So things like being able to use it as part of the format DAX function, or when you're formatting your values from the format pane, which we're going to cover in a little bit. When you're applying these format strings, the formatting is typically applied across the whole column or measure. However, what if we want to change the formatting based on some dynamic conditions? Let's have a look at this very basic table with a list of countries and the total headcount for each of these countries. Now, each of the countries vary massively in terms of level. We have some countries that have a couple hundred in their headcounts. However, we have some countries that go beyond millions or even billions in headcounts. Now, typically Power BI is very good at detecting the data and what levels it should automatically set for your values. But in cases such as this, where you want to group up the data to make sure that they're showing in the right levels, so for example, for the headcounts, we might want to show a 1.2b with a suffix as b to group it as billions, whereas in some other values that are below, we want to show the actual value itself. So for example, for Indonesia, we want to show 568. This is a good use case to use some dynamic options, which will let us dynamically set conditions and customize what formatting is used. So first, we're going to select the total headcount measure that we've created here. And under format here, instead of selecting any of these options, we'll choose dynamic at the bottom. This will change the view here from the measure into a format. And from here, we're going to simply just type the condition that we want. So we're first going to set a headcount to count the headcount that we have. The switch statement allows us to put some conditions here to change what the format string is based on what the headcount is being shown in this table. So for example, if the headcount is less than a thousand, we want to use the zero, which means no formatting. So as you can see on the table, the format is changed depending on what that value is for each of those rows and applies the correct grouping automatically. And I think that pretty much covers the formatting options that you can do without really getting into the semantic model. Now let's talk about formatting levels, which is something that you should be aware of if you're using custom formatting like this. So last August, the Power BI team enabled visual level formatting, which is meant to allow users 
to format their visual level calculations that they create for their visuals. Because unlike the typical columns or measures, you don't have access to the formatting options ribbon that you normally would. This now gives us three levels of formatting that you can apply to your measures and columns. This means that, for example, if you have a column, you can have three different formatting strings applied to it, but one overrides the other depending on what levels that they're at. For example, using the format ribbon at the top here, like how we've used in this video so far, is what we call the model level. So this means that if you used this measure as it is to visualize your data in your Power BI reports, it will be used by default. The new level, the visual level formatting option, is something that you will find in the format options. So here we have a bar chart, and if I select this, open up the format pane here, and then under properties, you will see that there is this new option, data format. This allows you to choose and apply what the formatting settings are for that value. By default, this is set to auto, which means that it will normally inherit what is applied on the model level. However, if you overwrite this with something different, it will now override what is in the model. So for example, if I just type, let's say dollar zero, so if we go to the tooltips here, you can see that it shows and uses that formatting option, whereas the other visual still stays the same, even though it's applied on the same measure. Lastly, we have the element level formatting, which you can customize if you're showing data using data labels or tooltips. So this is an option available on some visuals like this bar chart that we're using, for example. So under visuals, and if we enable data labels, for example, as you can see, we have the value option here, which lets you uh, again inherit what is on the model or visual level. But if you want to apply further formatting string options here, you can set this instead of auto into custom, which will let you set up that format string that you might want in this case. So if we just change this to a pound, for example, you'll see that that's what it will use, overriding everything else. Understanding these levels and how they work gives you a lot of flexibility when you're representing your data in your reports. This allows you to reuse the same columns or measures without needing to create a new one just for visualization purposes. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know a little bit more about format strings and how you use them in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.